It's okay, you can tell me, you know, if you were part of the crew who broke in. It's okay, you can tell me everything. I just need to know that to trust you. I just need to know how many lights do you see? There are four lights! Ah, Mr. Sin, hello. Oh, hey, how's it going? Not too uh, bad, not too bad. Doing? Nothing, what nothing at all. Come doing? sit down. We're just um playing with the new lighting system. Why do I come to this pub? I don't know, but I will find out who it was who broke in. Anyway, on with the show. Greetings, weary traveller. Welcome to the Minotaur's Head, the internet's premier nerd pub. Come in and grab yourself a stool at the bar and I'll pull you a refreshing pint of Charizard's Firewater whilst you listen to the regulars discuss the highs and lows of recent geek culture. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me here uh, at the Minotaur's Head. My name is Matt Moon and I am your bartender this evening. Uh, This evening, as you may have heard from our intro, I am joined by two of our finest regulars, one of whom might be feeling a little worse for wear. Uh, We are joined by Mr. Matt Banser. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) How many lights? Don't answer that. Um, And we are also joined by Mr. Sin. Hey. Hello. How is everyone this evening? All right. How are you? Yeah, good. Very warm. (laughs) It is very warm. It's it's the lights. Yes, the lights are quite hot. Especially since there are five lights. Anyway, um, yeah, no, it's it's phenomenally hot at the moment. It is. Um, we are in the the great heat wave of sixteen, as they will call it one day, maybe or not. Probably not. Probably not. The, Never mind. the three days or something. The three days of hotness of twenty sixteen. Yeah. I think they'll just call it summer. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> probably, probably. Always concise and to the point. I like it. I can't do it, but I like it. Um, <laughs> so, what's everyone got for us this evening? I have my normal uh, melange of, of things, all film-related things. Uh, what about yourself, Mr. Matt? What do you have for us? Uh, well, I have uh, the latest obsession going around, which is Pokemon Go. Oh, you caught it too, did you? I, I've caught something. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and it's itchy and flaky, and I shouldn't touch it. <laughs> it's... It's not as good as it would appear. <laughs> um, but, um, and also, um, 4K. Ooh. What is it good for? Uh, better, <laughs> better, than three, better than 3Ks, because that's racist. What? Think is about it? it. Oh, I see. There we go. Oh, I get it. It's a slow burn. <laughs> it's, it's a very long burn. A <laughs> Chinese burn. A Chinese burn. That's a racist burn. Anyway, and so, uh, Mr. Sin, what have you got for us before we get further down this weird 4K thing? Uh, I was going to talk about, uh, like, some movie news. <gasps> and then Stolen. some uh, Pokemon <laughs> Go and 4K. Oh, fair enough. Oh, hold on a minute. So, yeah. <laughs> I think you've just listened to what we just said, and you're just repeating it. What? I think oh. you might be onto something there. Oh, hang on, hang not, on, not hang on. What have we got on? Hang what on, yeah. You- <laughs> yeah, hang on. Uh, video games. <laughs> Nailed it. Similar. Well done. Excellent. Well, in that case, then, without further ado, we shall get on with the first section. Okay, so on with the first section, then, which is for Mr. Sin. Hey, how's it going? We've already done that bit. How did we? Yeah, every time you do this, we, we introduce, we say, hi, how are you doing? And you go, yeah, that's great. And then I introduce your well, section. I You're like, hi, like, how are you doing? I don't feel like we had enough of a... You know, there wasn't enough foreplay. Oh right, okay. Well, it's so, okay. Yeah. I have lube. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. It's not used to me here, though, is it? Mm, e lube. E lube. Nice. <laughs> Sends down the wires. Okay. Shall I? Shall I? Shall I just get on with it then? Yes. I don't have too much this week actually, um, but we can have a general chit chat about stuff if you want. Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Chit my chat. Nintendo. Nintendo. I have heard of these people. Nintendo. So, you know <laughs> Nintendo? I've, I'm vaguely aware of them. They have announced... They, it's quite, I guess it's quite an interesting thing. They've announced a mini NES, which is coming out towards the end of the year. Have you seen this? I, I saw that. Nintendo and I, yeah, Entertainment so System. I was almost sucked in. Yes, and it's got 30 games like built into it. It's, like, it's basically like a, a, a little tiny... Or not, t- not that tiny, kind of par- hand-sized, I think... Um, model of a NES. I guess it's. I'd imagine it's got a HDMI cable on the back, and it's just kind of got um, a bunch of NES games on it, basically, which is quite cool. That seems weird. So it's a, it's a NES emulator then. Yeah, effectively, it's a NES emulator in a box. 
um, oh. which is kind of weird, but kind of awesome. And I think that that's a good, good uh, development. I think more people should do things like that. Because mm. although I kind of hate HD remakes, you know, a couple of years after the games came out, yeah, I think <laughs> I think the thing with like, especially older games, and I mean, obviously. Maybe I'm maybe I'm jumping to conclusions here because it's going to just have like Mario and Zelda and stuff on it. But I think it's easy to for older games to get like lost and forgotten. Um, so actually, mm. kind of releasing an, an updated, uh, not even an updated version of the games, but an updated way to play the games, you know, legally, shall we say? Um, I think it's yeah. good. It's great. Um, <laughs> it comes with a controller, <clears throat> and you can buy. An, uh, you apparently have to buy a second controller. Um, but you oh, can right. use if you've got like a Wii. Uh, controller, then, or, or there's a few different Wii controllers that plug into the Wii Mates. Yeah. You can use those basically. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool, and it's yeah. And uh, I wonder if I can get find a list of games. Oh, I can. Oh, there's yeah. a big long list of games. Thirty, well, thirty games to be yes, precise. <laughs> thirty games. So I'm not going to read them all, but there's no real huge surprises. Mario, Zelda, Metroid, uh, Final Fantasy One, which is quite cool. Castle Bubble, Bubble. Yeah, Donkey Kong, Bubble. Bubble. We're going to read them all. <laughs> no, I just, I just, I just saw Bubble Bubble, and I thought, oh, I love that game. That's a good game. So, so yeah, uh, that's quite an interesting, um, uh, interesting thing for them to have done. Yeah. I think, especially as like uh, the whole kind of retro gaming thing is quite big at the moment with like indie games. Yeah, lots of indie games coming out with kind of retro styled um, stuff. And you mean like Bro Force? Like Bro Force. Yes. Bro Force. Favorite game. I knew you'd love that game. I love that game. <laughs> I haven't actually played it yet. Uh, it's like Contra, but with kind of eighties action movie stars. Of, yeah, act, uh, action hero people. Oh my god, that so looks have, amazing. So you have instead of like Conan the Barbarian, you have Bronan the Barbarian. Brobarian. Brobarian. <laughs> Brobo Cop. <laughs> it's one of my uh, friends. Oh, and Bromando. Which I, is, I, yeah, I like it. They they neatly avoid any licensing issues. As exactly. Well. Amazing, yes. and they even lean into it hard enough that Blade becomes Braid. Yeah, <laughs> you got to respect that level of commitment Absolutely, to a naming yeah. convention. It's yeah, awesome. I love it. It's so I... so eighties and so hardcore, ridiculous. It's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And I like they got um, Ellen Rip Bro as well. Yes, I haven't unlocked <laughs> her yet, but yeah, I'm aware of her. Yeah, <laughs> just like we didn't know how to make this name yeah. Bro, we just put it at the end. Yeah, we just tack Bro into there. <laughs> It's when he goes, this place is called Cambodia, but soon to be called Cambrodia. <laughs> like, fucking hell. Ah, uh, dear. Yes. I have to admit, I, I saw this uh, on some tech site somewhere, and I genuinely thought, I wonder if I can justify this to myself. Well, the Nez you're talking about. Yeah, the Nez. Not bro, not bro false. You don't need to justify bro false. No, exactly. That's, that's on my wish list. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. yeah, it's kind of an interesting idea. I mean, it's the kind of thing that is it's probably more of a collector's thing than a, the, uh, you know, I think if I bought one, it would be just because it would be nice to have rather than... Yeah, then it would collect dust. Yeah, play it loads necessarily. Because yeah. really... You can already play those games on other things, can't you? You can on a lot of things. I mean, get a like funny a little, tiny just, cat. A tiny <laughs> cat. Play it on a tiny cat. I don't know why that just came into my head that you could play it on a cat. I thought I'd share. Okay, thank you. Yeah. You're very kind. <laughs> I really sometimes, am. Sometimes you share too much. Sometimes I've been told that. Okay. But anyway, um, so yeah, mini Ness. That's pretty fun. Mini Ness! Family come. Will it still you're... have the incredibly painful controllers? Yes. Um, it looks like, yeah, it looks like it does have many versions of the incredibly painful controller so even harder to hold probably <laughs> um, perfect <laughs> yeah yeah the those shelf. original ones were just vicious well they looks like they're kind of rounded corners slightly oh that's just uh, i mean it's, it's still square but they look it's not like no but the original you know, ones were sharp you could stab someone with them yeah, yeah. they need yeah. to be like gently chamfered <laughs> <laughs> beautiful yeah uh, yes this is pretty exciting though I think that's good. I hope that starts a kind of a trend. You want your own mini Mega Drive? I just, I don't know. I think that these, this day and age, the thing was with video game technology, computer game technology, whatever, it moves on so fast. You know, games from like 10 years ago look like crap, don't they? Yeah. So people don't really bother making effort to preserve them. 
and I think this is a nice a nice way of doing that. Um, and I and I hope that it's 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 difficult, isn't it? It's a toss up between you know the laziness factor of uh, you know our companies just trying to make money off a load of old games that they have sitting about, but then also it's not it's kind of nice to play old games sometimes. Mm. No, I think but, yeah, I think that see people where, see where games come from. And yeah. stuff. I think that people get very caught up with whether it looks good or not, and it's like, well, there was quite a large amount of time where things didn't look good, and they still were amazing. I and mean, I would kill for a, a remake of Tenchu, or just to be able to play Tenchu on the PS4. That would be amazing. Yeah. The, the original two, none of the, none of the later ones, they were all a bit yeah, crap. Good, Those first two ones were brilliant. Yes. Um, you know, yeah. I and mean, even uh, even playing The Last of Us Remastered like I am now, you can tell it's a game that's like, you know, two or three years old. And even when it's been prettified, it still looks, you know, two or three years old. You know. Yeah. It's, yeah that, that game looked amazing when it came out. Yeah, and it still looks very pretty, but it looks very pretty for a PS3 game in my head. Yeah. Um, which is, yeah, it's interesting. Mm. Uh, that is the great debate, isn't it, about the... Uh, <clears throat> do we continuously press on with the uh, graphical improvements, which I'm sure they will. Yes. But is it at the cost of decent gameplay and good storylines? Yeah. But I think yeah. I think the thing I think the thing with you know, you're saying pushing on, I think that uh, computing power can be used for more than <laughs> graphics, can it? I think and yeah. I think that an increasing computing power helps with other other factors of a yeah. game. Like, I mean, I um, think, yeah, if you look at what's it called, Deus Ex Human Revolution, uh, coming out later in the year, I mean, that looks pretty as hell, and we know that the Deus Ex team are very good at, or well, the team, it's Square Enix who do Deus Ex. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they make an incredibly atmospheric, you know, game. I mean, like, the last one was brilliant, um, but it still looked amazing for its time. So, hopefully, you know, you don't lose the story aspect of it too much, but I suppose no. it depends whether you want a, want a single player or a multiplayer, really, doesn't it? So, I yeah. guess it does. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Or dares to, to wonder. Next? Do the next, next bit. Do the next okay. bit. Well, I've got a couple of mini Pokemon Go stories. They're making a mini version of that too. Which I'm just going to quickly, <laughs> I'm just going to quickly zip past because I think Matt's going to talk about it. And we, we we can join in. To, we oh, can well, do like, find a piece. Like. Well, it was just I don't know what you think about this. I'll so, have you know. no collaboration in my pub. <laughs> <laughs> That's my beer. <laughs> So you know, like, uh, <laughs> sorry, in Pokemon sorry. Go, you go to like Pokey Stops. Yep. Yes. To like recharge, you you don't get new items. Are they Pokey balls. Stops or Poke Stops? I don't know. I'm take, guessing take, it's Pokey, isn't it? Yeah, I thought I so. Think but it I, is actually yeah. Poke. But oh, is okay. it? Isn't it E with an accent? I think that's A. Isn't that then like uh, yes, Pokemon? Then I think yeah, so. Pokemon. Oh, I think I saw... that's technically how you're supposed to pronounce it, but. It's like Mario, you know, Mario actually is Mario. Yeah. But because we're British and we like say things our way. The, we say mean, Mario the way that the, the the language we created says it. Exactly. Yeah. Motherfuckers. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure <laughs> um like Italians invented the word Mario but or Mario. Yeah, but they probably copied it from us. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so it's coming out in Japan finally. I think it might have come out yesterday. Um, but it's quite interesting because so basically, just for anyone who the one person who isn't aware of it, um, you walk about and you go. You can go to like specific places in the real world called Poke Stops um, or Pokey Stops, regardless of how you want to pronounce it. Or as I heard um, the other day on Sunday brunch, yeah. Poke Stops. Poke Stops, nice. Yeah. In Japan, they're doing a uh, kind of a, a join up with McDonald's. So uh, over, <laughs> so. Thousand, over three thousand McDonald's restaurants will be gyms and pokey stops. Oh my god, that's amazing and <laughs> terrific at the same time. Yeah, 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 and I'm guessing that McDonald's pay quite a lot of money for that. So I'm interesting. Sure they do yeah. Interesting. Well, that's um, that is quite interesting, I guess, because. <laughs> It's a cool idea. I guess. Yeah. Well, the reason I say that is because... And that's a bit of a scammy idea. Mm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. If you think about it, that's that's like a double win situation because it's, it's two companies, isn't it? Mm. Well, it's three companies, in fact, really. Yeah. You, Nintendo, who owns something like 33% of uh, the Pokemon company, I believe, mm. or something like that. Something like that, yeah. Then you've got a Pokemon company, obviously, and then you've got um, the other company. Niantic. Thank you, I couldn't pronounce it. That sounds about right. It sounds alright in British. It does, indeed. However you said it is the way it was meant to be. With Mario. <laughs> Mario. Mario, mate. 
anyway, um, yeah, no, I, I think it's interesting because it. I guess on one hand, I feel that's a bit cheeky and you taking advantage of people and their kind of naivety in on some level. Yeah. Um, just blindly going to McDonald's. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Um, <laughs> and then on on the other hand, you kind of think actually that's that's quite good because that means the companies are all making money, which means that the it'll be more developed in the long run. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Mm. You'd hope. Mm. So. Or just go to the shareholders. <laughs> yes. It's pretty good, though, because, I mean, uh, if nothing else, it you know it, it means a whole load more Pokestops for people to go to. That's, um. that's one issue I've found. Because uh, I... Well, I wouldn't say I live in a sparsely populated area, but... No. Where I happen to be in a reasonably populated area, there doesn't seem to be that many stops within... Uh, within you know, within distance. what three minutes walk? Five, five. <laughs> minutes walk. At least five minutes. At least five minutes walk. I what? think you might be missing the point of this game. I, I've, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I am. I've come to the conclusion that I'm not I, walking to play this motherfucking game. <laughs> this, that this, is the conclusion that I've came to. Nice. Um, Geocaching app. Yeah, I know, <laughs> bastards. Making me walk to get yeah. bloody pokeballs from a poke stop. <laughs> But it's like seriously, uh, there's um, like <clears throat> we've we've now because we always go for a walk at lunchtime at work, a couple of us, and of, since the Pokemon things off, there's most of us have kind of fallen into the deadly trap of Pokemon Go. So um, it was today was the first day that we have now modified our route to ensure that we go through two Poke stops. Yeah. We go through them twice each. Nice. Yeah. Good. Well, <laughs> it's, what's it's, wrong with that? Well, I don't know. I think it's 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 quite concerning for me, really. It's like, the, the it's it's now adversely affecting my behaviour. Wait, how is that adversely? Because it's changing my mind. That's not adverse. Yeah, it is. It's making you walk a different way. Exactly. Why is that adverse? That's more steps. There's more steps. That's the Surely point. that's a positive, though. That's positive, yes. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's extending, extending your lifespan or something. <laughs> you getting so. more exercise. <laughs> I, don't, I don't agree with it. I think it's wrong. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it, it is quite interesting, because um, Sin, obviously, yesterday, forced me on um, to go to uh, a Pokestop <laughs> at 12 o'clock at night, was it? It was, I think it was 12.40. You went on a midnight Pokemon hunt. <laughs> no, it was 12.40, so it was past midnight. It's 12.40. R- remind, me, remind me how old you both are again. No. <laughs> I was 12 in 1996, so fuck you. And I was some age at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I existed at that point. It was like a five-minute stroll to the park. <laughs> in, the, in the pitch black, wandering around okay. people's, the edges of people's <laughs> gardens. I've got Pokemon. Yay. Got, we only got two each. Didn't yeah, we? Did you one. get anything good? No. Oh. I got, yeah, Drowsy is pretty good. Is it? I think it's pretty good. Is it? <laughs> is it? Is so it? That's, that is my, uh, my kind of slightly like indignatious. Cool, like a cool sleepy elephant. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a sleepy elephant, a Drowsy. What? It is, and he kind of wiggles his fingers at the same yeah. time. Yeah. He eats people's bad dreams. Which is quite nice, really. Exactly. Not really a pocket monster. You want one of those in your house, don't you, really? Because then you won't have any bad dreams. Interesting. So, clearly, we're just, you know, helping ourselves. It It is amazing, though, just how addictive, <laughs> like, everybody seems to be. Like, I, I think Pokemon appears to be a magical kind of product for, like, these companies because it, everybody I know... Even at my company, I look around the office and I think, you're not that geeky. You're not that geeky. Yeah. You're definitely not a geek. And there's people, I've seen people at lunchtime go, check it out, there's a Pokemon underneath my desk. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just thinking, is this really happening? You know what you should do to those people, don't you? Beat uh, them. Uh, <laughs> beat them? It's a bit extreme, isn't it? No, they need to understand that that's not a funny joke. No, no, but they were being serious. I know. That's why it's not funny. <laughs> You'd be like, look, 
let's talk about AR. Let's talk. You know, I have a podcast that you need to listen to. <laughs> it's good. I think it's just a, a big brand, and I think that perhaps for us slightly older folks, maybe we don't really appreciate how big the brand is because yeah, perhaps we only caught the kind of maybe the the beginning of it. Hmm. Um, but you know, there's a lot of Pokemon games. They, they still bring out Pokemon games every few years. There's a new one coming out in the fall. Yep. Which I'm sure will do brilliantly off the back of Pokemon Go. Yep. And you know, it's a big brand. It's up there with you know Mario and Disney and stuff like that. You know, hmm. especially in Japan and stuff. Mario, I genuinely Disney, Scientology. I, had, <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never had the the slightest inkling, inkling that Pokemon was just that well embedded to like society's subconscious. Yeah. That. This one one mobile app would just explode. But I think you know, especially for anyone under the age of kind of mid thirties, I think you know you, you know a bit about Pokemon. A lot, most people, I would say, or maybe not. Maybe that's just my experience. You're just but. aware of the fact that Pikachu is a thing. Yeah, there we go then. You know Pikachu. You know who Ash is probably from the cartoon. Mm, vaguely. I'm sure you've mentioned Misty and Brock to me before. Misty and Brock. No. <laughs> maybe that was Tim. Were they the bad guys? No, they weren't. Oh. But you know, yeah, there we go. So you know Team Rocket. Ah, yes, the one with the weird pink hair. Yes, there you we see, go. I, I only vaguely remember this because when I was um, seventeen and a bit, I had glandular fever for the like for like one of one an entire half term. Yeah. Couldn't move from. I, I literally woke up in the morning, went and sat in a chair in the front room, couldn't move for the entire day, and just put on the telly. And there were two episodes of Pokemon on in the morning, and the same two in the afternoon. Oh, and I God. was so tired, I wouldn't turn the channel over. <laughs> <laughs> You'd watch it twice a day. I watched day. it twice a day. So at the time, yeah, I could tell you everything about Pokemon that was from that. These days, I can't remember much. But that's, I mean, that's my point. My yeah, point yeah, is, yeah, yeah. You, know, you yeah. Who, who have never played a Pokemon game would say you didn't know anything about Pokemon. You've still got that experience of Pokemon. Yeah. You know, an understanding. You must have un- have a vague understanding that it's catching monsters in little balls. Oh, yeah. No, but anyone gets that pretty quickly, don't they? Yeah. But that's, that's what I'm saying. I think it's a bigger and more culturally, they say, culturally ingrained thing than maybe we, you would think mm. it is. I think a lot of people know about it. Well, especially, well, especially like I say, yeah, like mid 30s and under, I think it's quite 33 big. million and counting or something yesterday, well, wasn't it? Exactly, exactly. So, you know. If you didn't know about it before, you do now. Yes, you will yes. now. Yes. I'll never know. Um, so, my next little, I was just going to touch on somebody released. Um, uh, uh, a 3D printed phone case. Oh, that's amazing! <laughs> sent to you, which is in the shape of the Pokédex. How Yay. cool is that? What's Pokédex? Well cool. I'm surprised that Nintendo haven't made that themselves. No, well, I'm sure they will. I'm do. surprised Nintendo hasn't sued the shit out of them. To be totally <laughs> honest, I'm sure they will do eventually. <laughs> What's a Pokédex? What's a Pokédex? That's like a little computer that you capture all your, your Pokémon in. Yeah, hold your Poké Index. Yeah, it's you like put, you, you put them so in the computer. Right, hang on, hang on, hang on. So no, hang on. So Ooh, when, the whole point of Pokemon, right, is that you're like a kid. Yes. And you go around, and you, uh, the professor who lives in your little village, says, uh, "I'm a Pokemon professor. I know loads about Pokemon. But here's this little computer. Can you go around and find out about Pokemon for me?" Right. So you go out with this Pokédex, and then whenever you see a Pokémon, it gets this data gets entered into this into the Pokédex. So it's a Pokémon tricorder. Maybe I don't know what that is. What's that? You don't know what a tricorder is. No. Oh, that's upsetting to me. It's the the um, scan the handheld scanner that you use in Star Trek. Oh, uh, well, I don't know about Star Trek. <laughs> I like, that's I like been around, that's been like around for fifty <laughs> years this year. Come on. Yeah. Well, okay, that's fine. But my point is. <laughs> You should know about Pokemon, then, if I should know about Star Trek. What's the difference? One of them Star is Trek's from... been around for a hell of a lot longer. Yeah, exactly, and Pokemon's actually from our generation. <laughs> so is oh, Star Trek the next it. generation. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It started in 1987. Yeah, that's not... I was three. I was five. I don't care. Matt? N- then you got Deep Space Nine. <laughs> and you got Voyager. The yeah, thing both is pretty which... obvious that anything after the next generation is terrible. No, no, <laughs> no, that's not <laughs> like, true at all. Not terrible, terrible, no. Maybe. <laughs> Deep, no, Space, Deep Nine, Space Nine was Deep, good. Deep, yeah, Deep Space Nine from season four onwards is good. And, and Voyager was Voyager almost a better. good idea. Yeah, it was, a, it, it was a good idea. It just got, you know, roundly crapped on to begin with, yeah. <laughs> it got better towards the end and then it fell apart again, but, you know, yeah. And the I less said about be. Enterprise, the better. There's, there isn't one, is there? 
Yeah. Oh. Did you not see that one? No, I'm joking. I ignored it. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not too bad. Although, to be fair, by the by the third season, that uh, uh, did its stride too. Uh, let's not go off on a Star Trek tangent, please. I think we already have, haven't we? Let's <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. talk about Evo. 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 Isn't that something that Mitsubishi make that goes fast? Yes, and also it's a fighting game tournament. Yay! I <laughs> know how you love your fighting game tournaments. I do like fighting games. So I was just going uh, to... There's not. I don't really have too much news about it. I was going to say Street Fighter Five was there, the game that everyone mind about because it wasn't really finished because they wanted to get it out so everyone could have some practice for this tournament, basically. Oh, right. Um, and a guy, a South Korean player, won called Lee Sion Wu. I don't know. There's not really that much exciting news. Somebody won the thing. <laughs> so, but it was just... Do you want to rethink that whole like, topic? <laughs> no, I was going to bounce, bounce off the back of this, actually. There's a couple of things I was going to bring up. One is the list of games, which is kind of... So you got um, Street Fighter Five, which is obviously the newest Street Fighter. Yeah. Um, replacing Street Fighter Four. Uh, you got Killer Instinct, which does anyone play the old Killer Instincts? No, I didn't think I, I think played. I might have done actually. Uh, was that the one with the girl with the green thing with the weird pointy boobs? I'm gonna say yes. Um Mortal Kombat ten, so uh, obviously that's the most recent Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Uh Pokken Tournament, which is the Pokemon fighting game. Oh. Which I talked about I think a few months ago. Uh Tekken Seven, which actually is only out in arcades at the moment still. It's not out on any home consoles. I think it's coming Ooh. out on Home consoles and PC next. Does it look good though? What Tekken Seven? Yeah. In what way? Does Does it look like it's going to be a good game to buy for oh. the next generation consoles? A Tekken game. So, what do you expect from a Tekken game? Well, after the people two, the floor. Um, it was kind of going downhill. <laughs> <laughs> to be Wait. honest. What's that? What's that? that? Why? Yeah. Why don't you like? I don't know. Was it? I can't remember which one I kind of switched off on. It was, I think it might have been 4. Yeah, 4 was terrible, but then they started making proper ones again. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So 4, they tried to take the movement thing from Soul Calibur, and everyone went, uh, it's not really Tekken, is it? And yeah. then they went, oh, sorry, we'll fix it, and, and then they went back to normal. Oh, okay. So, yeah, 5 and 6, and the two Tekken tournament ones are back to the kind of normal Tekken. Nice. Yeah. Good so, anyway. Uh, um, what else is there? Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which is the Capcom Marvel crossover fighting game. Um, which is good fun if you've ever played that. It's all kind of zany. Um, and then uh, Guilty Gear Exerd Revelator, which, yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just like an anime, a crazy anime fighter. Uh, and then, bizarrely, there's two Smash Brothers uh, games in the tournament. Do you know Smash Brothers? Both of you heard of Smash Brothers? I'm vaguely aware of it. Uh, somewhat. That's the Nintendo first party kind of fighting game with Mario and all that in it. Yeah, so there's two versions of that, because um, there's the Wii U one, which obviously is the most recent one, and then there's Melee, which actually was on the GameCube, but um, it's got such a big kind of following still Melee um, that they still have it in Evo as well. So it's quite interesting. Well, that one seems to have jumped onto uh, 3DS. What? The Smash, Smash Bros. Yeah, yeah, the biggest one was, was on, yeah, there's Wii U and 3DS it came out on. Nice. Yeah, so that's so that's Evo. So quite, I've been watching a few of the videos from it. It's, it's always quite, uh, you know, I quite like fighting games. So it's always interesting to watch and pick up He's a few. Such a fighty bastard. Yes, yep. Yeah. Better than doing it in real life. Um, <laughs> and the other news off the back of this is <laughs> just going back to Street Fighter Five. So uh, we talked about this a little bit before when it was released. Street Fighter Five. It had a bit of a dearth of content, and people were a bit negative about it. Slowly been releasing new people and stages and things, but on the whole, charging for them, so people are still a bit pissed off. Um, and they announced uh, a new DLC, the Capcom Pro Tour DLC, which has a stage and three costumes, um, and it's twenty pounds oh. to download a new stage and three costumes. That's extortionate. Twenty pounds. Bearing in mind, you can probably get the game itself on Amazon for about twenty pounds. What an absolute bloody joke! <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, so it's a real, it's a real shame. I think even the, getting a new fighter is only like six or seven pounds. So it's just that's oh. amazing. Even that you have to pay like that 
seven, seven pounds a fighter or something. That's yeah. that's quite extortionate as well when yeah. you think about it. But it's, so, it's weird. I think what annoys me about the this whole kind of trend of kind of breaking it down into small chunks is that yeah. they seem to just whack the price straight up. Yeah, totally. But it's was it? Um, I'm just sure close to Mr. Moon's heart is um, Battlefront. Yes. When they <laughs> when they released that, and I just felt that they'd forgotten half the game. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then they're like, "Oh, but there's lots of content coming out. You just need to buy an annual pass. So if yeah. you get the deluxe edition, that's ninety pounds." Yeah. It's like, hold on a minute. You're trying to trick me. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to trick me into spending money, a lot of money that I don't need to, mm. because yeah. I just won't play it. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, I got the game uh, for Christmas, but I, I, I ended up buying the season pass um, because I was like, well, I've not spent any money on it so far, and I really want to see this because they've been even more cunning than that. Because they then give you weekends where you, because obviously the patches come out, and you have to download the patches on the PS4 anyway, so everyone has the game. Everyone has all of the bits of the game. It's just whether you've paid them to unlock the bit of the game that you want, um, which yeah. is a really irritating bit. So they'll do free weekends where you can try out the new areas, uh, yes. <laughs> which is really bad because you then go, yeah, I'll play that for a weekend, then I'll be fine. And that's how they got me. Yeah. I went, yeah, 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 oh, this is good. Actually, the new areas were good. And I was like, oh, this is really good. Oh, I can't play it anymore. Oh, 40 pounds. But then I get four <laughs> of the... Hmm. And I didn't pay for it in the first place, so I would have spent that 40 pounds. Interesting, and I ended up buying it. <laughs> yes. So yeah. So so, unsurprisingly, there's been quite a big backlash about this twenty pound DLC as well. Yeah, that is it's, ridiculous. Uh, yeah, it's very ridiculous, and it's it's interesting because last generation, uh, Capcom released a game called Street Fighter Cross Tekken, which is uh, understand obviously a crossover between Street Fighter and Tekken. Mm. Shocking, um, and that was, <laughs> and that again had DLC characters which you had to pay for. Yes. Uh, but somebody found somebody did some like data mining on the discs and found that actually the characters were already on the disc. Oh fucking hell! So it's not even content that they'd made later. Mm. It was you know actually made. It was just for the game play. and then put behind a pay barrier. That's ridiculous. Which is pretty pretty naughty, really, isn't it? No. I uh, you see, the weird thing I I find quite difficult to kind of balance out is that they it's clearly the think. Well, apart from sea source, <laughs> uh, especially when you're on your own, um, <laughs> it's, I, oh, I feel so bad for you now. <laughs> it's this image it's, of you in a lonely sea source, just jumping and just smashing uh, back down again. You just have to stand it in the fulcrum and ah! Oh. Wow! Oh my god! <laughs> you, just, you just now you just told me how to do it. <laughs> to do. Just it's stand. not going to be difficult now, is it? Oh no! But now good. he'll be happy by himself. That's not good. Oh, it was a challenge. I was quite, in, I was quite enjoying the idea of you sitting there just weeping slowly as you just like <laughs> bounce and then come smashing back down again, oh, dear. slowly cra- crushing your spine with each each you know, you know jarring thump back into the earth. <laughs> I can do it. Smash. <laughs> I can do it. Smash. <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> yeah, I'd like this. This has gone to a weird place. It really has. I'm quite enjoying it though. <laughs> so. Yeah, I always, I always kind of feel kind of like torn. Like at one on one like hand, I feel really yeah. quite cross with companies for like <laughs> sneaking on that content yeah. and then just like unlocking it for twenty pounds later. But yeah. then, like they, they clearly think that the amount of work that they've put into the game to create is worth more money than the kind of the. Well, I guess it's. I was going to say thirty pounds, but it's not that anymore. Is it? it's forty pound bracket? Five most of the time. That um is kind of accepted nowadays mm. and i'm guessing it, would it if someone went we've made all this content and then a couple of months later oh we've made some more content and then a couple of months later and i've made some more content there you go is that any different really i suppose at least then you're actually paying for having the- made it all really up front and saying mm-hmm. well actually we've made it all up front we we've you know we've we've moved that development team on they don't need to work on that anymore. But what we've done is we've just scheduled bits of the content to be released for some money later. But it's no real different from saying, well, actually, instead of spending the time on up front, they've spent it further down the road. I, I suppose the other thing is they want to encourage other people to play it for longer and therefore more people are more likely to buy it in the shops. 
Because yeah. like with Battlefront, everyone would have stopped playing that by now, I suspect, or that, uh, you know, except for the hardcore few. But the repeated releases of um, of of new stuff have kept people coming back again. Yeah, so you get a, a I guess you get a larger play player base than yeah. you would have done otherwise. Yeah, which is essentially good for the game mm. and its longevity, which is good for the players. Um, but yeah, I am kind of torn between. I understand that there's no real difference mm. between the two situations. It's whether you've put the effort up front or mm. you've actually just carried on with a slightly reduced team later. <laughs> mm, By the know. way, I every think... time you say you're torn, I keep on thinking of the Natalie and Brulia song. Oh dear God! Continue. I just I think it's quite cynical. I think to do that to say we're going to hold back content and re- and charge you extra for it when we've already made it. But then, then arguably, you could say, well, surely they already, they've already planned out the DLC. So isn't that cynical to say, well, actually, we'll just wait a little bit, then make some new stuff so everybody comes back, then wait a little bit longer, then make some more? There's no, 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 no difference no. to it at all. I th- well, I, I, I respectfully disagree. <laughs> <laughs> John, di- dis- I think, disrespectfully uh, disagree. I want to see uh, what happens. Well, I think, uh, no, I think that you know, if a game comes out and it bombs, then they're not going to make any DLC for it, are they? Surely, they're not going to spend the extra time and effort making game, making more content for a game. But if a game does well, then it's you know giving people what they want. But if you're kind of banking before a game's even come out on on providing this drip feed, I, I just think that's I don't know. I think it's just a bit anti-consumer. Is it the same sort of thing, or not the same sort of thing? But is it the similar sort of uh, mental process with the people who are? Um, at the top directing who gets the money to make what and so on and so forth as is behind everyone in Hollywood trying to make all their movies uh, franchisable and have sequels and stuff <laughs> is it, do you think it's a similar thing because these days Hollywood seems to be impo- in, it, it seems to be impossible to make a mainstream movie without having lots of as you put it drip feeding for a, for a sequel yeah maybe um, dotted throughout and I just want, it just struck me then and I was like oh that's interesting that's I, the big, I mean, it's all about money at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah. And I think that's the big thing nowadays, yeah. is making a franchise. Yeah. And if you look at, you know, like almost gaming franchises, I mean, recent gaming franchises like Assassin's Creed or something like that, where. Mm. Oh, they have been milked. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And I think that's the, I mean, that's the, just, that's the similar thing to, mm. you know, the whole let's make a franchise out yeah. of this film. Because that, that should have been three games and done, really, shouldn't it? Well, I think it was okay to carry it on, but I just think. Maybe not one a year. Yeah, not definitely not one a year, and they obviously had no real idea what they. Were. I mean, I don't know if you how much of Assassin's Creed you guys have played, but up to Black it kind Flag, of, it kind of fizzled out, and the whole yeah. um, Desmond stuff. Well, yeah, because it felt to me, it felt to me mm. like they were basically going to build up to Desmond being a modern day assassin. Yeah, that was where I thought they were going with probably three, it, and it was going to yeah. be the Templars. But then they went, oh, hang yeah. on, this is popular. We can do a million more in a different time period. And yet somehow never do feudal Japan. <laughs> well, there's still, t- there's still time. Oh, oh yeah, no, now no, you've done it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's funny you should say that because I stopped. What was, the, um, what was the Native American one? Three. 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 Yeah. Well, that's when I stopped playing because I just yeah, I lost it, really. Yeah, I got halfway through that and stopped playing it. I still haven't finished it. I tried again with Black Flag because everyone was like, oh, the ship bits are amazing. And I was like, yeah, they're yeah. fine for 20 minutes. And then I got bored. It was a bit. I, it was very derivative. I felt bad. Yeah. Black Flag, all the extra bits. Yeah. I, I actually, I preferred Black Flag when it was being Assassin's Creed. Net one, it was trying to be Grand Theft Auto with boats. Or <laughs> That's a good way of putting oh, it. Oh, boiled yeah. down to Grand Theft Auto quips. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, I mean, that is like, a good oh, point. Drive no, around it was, the boat yeah. and do some stuff. Yeah. Sort of you know. Yeah, it's um, unfortunately. I think it's probably. That franchise for me died at, uh, after two. Yeah. Two was the, the strongest entry by a long shot because that had a serious storyline to it as well, and a, yes. and a good well, character. I quite liked characters. the one after two, which was I think was in Rome. Oh, Brotherhood! I think that was, was it. Brotherhood, for me, that, that, yeah. Cause it was I another think Ezio one, wasn't it? Yeah, there was three Ezio ones. Yeah, but yes, it was so the second Ezio one. I think that was where they reached the peak of what they. I think one was really good. But it was a bit basic, and two, they kind of built on it mm. nicely and get a slightly more interesting protagonist. Yeah. And then three, they took that protagonist and built it into a, a much nicer, kind of more varied world. 
Mm. But then after three or whatever it was, Brotherhood, they kind of didn't. I didn't really feel that it ever moved on. It was just no, it was just the same with twin defense. Yeah, or a new gimmick like yeah. the one after that. I think had tower defense bits. The one after that it was your Native American and you can climb up trees. Yeah. And hunt. The one after that was boats. Yeah. So you know, meh. And then Landon in it. Yeah. Well, there was one in France as well. Oh yes, of course, the one yeah, that gave people nightmares. Did. And there was another one. Oh yes, the last one on the PS3, Rogue. Yeah, which no one played. Yeah, which is apparently <laughs> which... significantly better than Unity. Yes, which yes. I think is hilarious. I just love the fact that Unity is remembered for giving everyone nightmares. Yes, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh look, he's speaking, but I can only see his eyes and tongue. Yeah, hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there we go. What? There we was, go. was that everything? So oh, Pokemon Go, woo! Sorry, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, what have I? What have I got? Oh, I got one more thing, which is just like a public service announcement. Really, um, did anyone ever play Life is Strange? Yes. No. Oh, cool. Matt. No. Nope. Moon. No. Not, so not yet. No, that's the the girl simulator one, isn't it? The girl simulator. That's how you described it to me. No, I did not. It was pretty much what you were saying. <laughs> the girl simulator. Is it or so, is it not about being a teenage girl? It's about being a teenage girl who has girl like, simulator. Case and case time rests. Time and remake her decisions and uh, lots of other girl kind of simulator. Decisions. I'm pretty sure most women can do that. Okay, they just don't anyway. tell us. So anyway, the, the <laughs> first is, is episodic. I think there there are I believe five episodes, um, and the, they have announced, and I believe it's now in effect that the first episode is now free forever <gasps> on every. Oh, so, if anyone has been looking to play it, it's quite. I've played the first episode. I'm playing it with in tandem with my wife, who is terrible and doesn't ever play it, <laughs> even though I constantly remind her um, to play it. And oh, I thought you meant she was just that. a terrible person. I was like, she you is, do realise this goes out on the internet, don't you? She doesn't um, listen to it because she's a terrible person. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, but the first, I've played the first episode and some of the second episode and I enjoyed what I played um, so definitely if it's it's basically a bit like a, what's the one the crappy one the um, everyone the David Cage Quantic Dream whatever it is come on Matt. David Bowie no that's no Heavy that's Rain fucking hell oh my god <laughs> it's kind of like a Heavy Rain-ish game I didn't really like Heavy Rain but um, whatever but this one's quite fun yeah. and that's the end of my seg way meant segment segwayment segwayment excellent well thank you for sharing your segwayment with us oh, that, was been, um, that. that was love that it was quite a hard one this week <laughs> well that's what you always tell me well whenever I'm with you <laughs> excellent right then well in that case then onwards to the next section so we shall make our next stop on the entertainment train this evening with Mr. Matt Manser <laughs> I was really hoping one of you was going to go for that. I was like, come on, come on. <laughs> too, yeah. too late. Sin's there. Woo! Um, well, <clears throat> to be honest, we've kind of briefly touched on one of the topics I was going to discuss anyway, which was Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go! I think we've, we've done that to death now. Possibly. We talk about our midnight excursion, we did, yeah. We did, yes, yeah. the one that you forced us on, yeah. Are you, it was you who wanted to do it. <laughs> your girlfriend won't go out with you because she's embarrassed. <laughs> Well, that's got nothing to do with Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the same before Pokemon Go. Way. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> so I just got. This was a bit of a weird conversation. I got a, a new telly. I've been, I've been wanting a new telly for ages and ages, like that last pff, five years or something. Telly, 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 so telly, telly, I, I finally telly. dipped into my little penny jar and uh, got a 4K TV. Wow! How did it which, fit in the penny jar? It's Carefully. Five, <laughs> five, five years of pennies, that's what it is. Um, so I finally got it, and I thought, yes, I can now watch 4K. <laughs> and then I realised, bugger, there's no content in 4K. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody else yeah. come up with this dilemma? Yeah, the best you can get is, like, nature videos on YouTube. Yay. They're, like, I two minutes two minute long kind of nature shots and things that people have done which are, which are gorgeous but like when would you ever sit and watch that uh, other than to go wow look at my lush new TV I think probably I might well, go and do yeah. that later 
there's a few. Yeah, there are a few. Yeah, and that's what I did when I got a 4K TV. I was like, yeah, look, maps come around. I'll show him the 4K with this YouTube video. Is a, here's a snake eating a mouse or whatever. And then it's like, yeah, that's it. Everything else is just HD still. Yeah. Because I, I, was, I was just kind of looking at... And to be fair to people like um, Amazon, Netflix, and other streaming providers, they do, really they do have some them? content... But it kind of, I can pretty much count it on two hands. And then, like, you kind of go, oh, uh, I could pay several pounds extra a month on each yeah. of these services, mm. but I would have probably, well, no way, I've watched all of the things that are 4K already. Mm. <laughs> so it kind of feels like a bit of a jip. Yeah. <laughs> well, Apart from the fact, uh, yeah. I, I guess I am kind of future proofed. Well, it would be really ironic now if they jump from 4K to like 8K or something and you're like stuck in the middle going, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, I think the thing really is just that not many people have 4K TV still, so yeah. it's probably not that uh, efficient for yeah. them to do lots of content, really. I think also, also the, the good thing is, though, that I think that they're more likely to pick up 4K as a, as a format rather than the, the whole 3D flop where everyone was like, yeah, 3D TV, and they did like two f- football games in 3D and then nobody else bought them. <laughs> I've I've never I never really understood the the 3D like TV thing. I can understand virtual reality and AR. That's really easy for me to comprehend because, Is that because I can see, you can go on midnight walks with sin with the second one. <laughs> well, no, it just occurs to me that you know they have real world applications. Like, yes, you know, yeah. If you want to view a model in three dimensions as if it was actually made it with AR, you can do that. If you've got, obviously got the right equipment, um, and equally, if I want to fully immerse myself in a virtual reality, I'll put like you know some virtual reality headsets on or whatever. But um, with three D on TVs, mm, it does feel like and a even mesh, even cinemas, it? it's just like well, it's like looking into a box. <laughs> I mean, it is. It's just like, um, well, actually, there was very pretty. Avatar, things. like looking into a box. <laughs> there was one that I watched, which was very cleverly done. I can't remember what the hell it was now, but it it actually looked more like it. Um, it was crafted to look as if it was on a stage. Oh yes, yeah, I and that was amazing yeah. because that it was obviously it's limited depth, but it yeah. did feel as if it was a, a proper stage when you're yeah. watching it. But with 3D films, yeah, it's kind of pretty, uh, but it just kind of seems like a lot of effort for not much gain. I think the problem is that most 3D movies these days aren't actually 3D movies. They're post-converted. Yeah. Um, Which is just terrible. Yeah, which is terrible. And the problem is that's just a money-making thing. But the only two films that I've ever seen that have been filmed in 3D actually look better for being in 3D because they were filmed with 3D in mind. And they're the Hobbit trilogy and um, Avatar. And you can tell they're meant to be 3D movies because of the shot choices and stuff. Um, and you can, tell, you can tell that other movies are not meant to be 3D movies because of, again, the shot choices. Because 3D doesn't work with fast cuts. Now, is that... Um, do you think the reason it hasn't really taken off, or part of the reason it might not have taken off so well, 3D mm. movies, is the fact that there are so many um, film professionals who are so used to filming 2D um, you know, films mm. as opposed to the feedy ones, that yeah. it is actually a lot of effort for them to go and then actually hold on. I need to completely change this shot, yeah, and the way that we film it. It is a lot yeah. of effort, and also it's the the cameras are huge. I mean, they're getting smaller, but they, uh, you know, you watch the making of the Hobbit or something, and you see the size of these bloody things. Um, and that's before you even get into like mocap and all of that side of things as well. And you know. Yeah, it it is a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of um, changing ways of doing things. And yeah, it's just difficult. But I do think that you know, it's going to either become three D or go to sort of VR, um, you know, sort of films at some point, and they'll be filmed in three D. It's just that yeah. the the technology is not mature enough yet to be used by everyone. Yes, I think you're right. Yeah. I yeah. Don't, I don't. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Oddly enough, that brings me on to another kind of a, a nicely segued moment into um, there's a video uh, game company. I, for the life of me, I cannot remember who they are, but it's maybe someone could Chad look it up. Stock. Maybe somebody could look it up whilst I'm Nintendo. No, whilst I'm uh, rambling about it. But it is basically um, a guided tour through Chernobyl. Oh, right. oh, that's pretty cool. 
which is quite cool. But the reason they they, they did it um, was because they reckon in the next couple of years that Chernobyl will kind of effectively and its surrounding areas will effectively have disintegrated to a point where it is dangerous to go and actually go around the rotting buildings and try and mm. get up all of the, the images and stuff because it just won't be safe anymore. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like the last opportunity that they felt that they could go around and mm. kind of capture what the sense of the abandoned yeah. um, kind of area and the story behind it. Yeah, nice. Which is quite cool, but it's all in virtual reality, and it's yeah. supposed to be. There are segments where they've not done it uh, quite like uh, they haven't done full VR. They've done like um, three hundred and sixty uh, videos uh-huh. instead, and those bits are quite. It's very linear, obviously, because at that moment you're actually wandering through as the cameraman, as opposed yeah. to going backwards and forwards. But uh, it looked really interesting, actually. Yeah. I think that that's the sort of thing. I mean, I think VR tourism is going to be a big thing at some point, um, or something along those lines will happen at some point. But yeah, I mean, it's certainly with Chernobyl, the whole pro- the whole problem is that everything's, as you say, turning to dust slowly, and that dust is all radioactive, which is a real problem because um, it means that whenever you go walking and it kicks up, it gets in your lungs, and obviously that's not good. So you know, public health service announcement there. Yeah, um, but no, I, I do think that the way films are going to integrate into VR will be interesting when that becomes a point. Because, again, it's like all of these technologies. When it becomes cheap enough for everyone to do it regardless, you know, when you can buy yourself a, a, you know, a a mini GoPro that does 3D for, like, 100 quid or something, they will be 3D everywhere, you know? Oh, yeah, I agree. And to a certain extent, that already is there. But, I mean, even in major filmmaking, that will be the case. And I think that that's probably the real thing that's putting people off at the moment is that you can do high def digital uh, camera work on a couple of grand's worth of camera or even less, a couple of hundred quid's worth of camera in some cases, um, and make it something that's worthy of being out in the mo- out, out of the cinema. But you want to do the same in a three D movie? It, yeah, it costs a hell of a lot more. Yeah, I also think that um, kind of like what you're saying. I think for filmmakers you know the experience of films and, and mm. films that have inspired filmmakers you know they're not 3D so no I this is true it takes somebody to to you know like I guess James Cameron to, to kind of yeah. look into the idea of 3D mm. um, and also I, I I still think you know 3D it's not I mean it's not quite um, I don't know if we would call, say it was a bit of a fad or mm. do people still watch 3D films at the cinema I don't know if that's still a thing um, I think so but they usually I don't yeah <laughs> I just kind of think, you know, if you think about like Technicolor, when mm. Colour really first started coming out, and it was eye searingly awful <laughs> yeah. Yeah. at times. Because, it's not just green, it's green! Because nobody had really had that in films mm. before, so they didn't, there weren't, you know, colorists and people who studied the effect of colour on a scene and things like that. Yeah. It was just like, pow, we can do colour. Yeah. And I think uh, that a lot of the 3D films, especially, you know, in that first kind of splurge, mm. were just how we can do 3d let's yeah. make it 3d and, i mean i yeah. think that yeah that is still ha- i mean i think the problem yeah. is that most people who go to see 3d movies these days do it because it's like oh it's 3d and you're like well is it meant to be 3d is my question so i i, but I think that you know. i think that the thing with 3d is that if you want once we get to a stage where people are more comfortable and more interested in mm. 3d uh, from a filmmaking perspective yeah think we'll start to see much more interesting use of 3d yeah no absolutely and i think that's the next sort of thing that i'm looking forward to because yeah, i mean there, not, there are still there are still a load of people who refuse to use digital um when they're filming yeah they're exactly. like it has to be on celluloid if it's not on celluloid it doesn't look right i'm not sure i agree one way or another because i yeah, don't know enough but, about but the technicalities the whole, of the it but frame yeah. rate thing as well with the hobbit wasn't there yes yeah which i think should still become or still will become a, a thing yeah. At some point, I mean, because uh, did you watch it in the high frame rate at, at the cinema? I have no idea. Okay, it, well, I just it, I watched it at the cinema. Did you watch actually. it in three D? Uh, I can't remember because okay. <laughs> I remember it watching like, it in three yeah. D and, and forty eight frames per second and all that, and it was more real than real life. It was really yeah. weird. You walk out afterwards, going, everything out here is really boring and not three D. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> you know, that's just a feeling I get when I come out of the cinema. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> where are all the fun things <laughs> you don't have lightsabers no. um yeah no but it, it was it was really really quite impressively effective and, and that wasn't just me saying that that was um both uh jen and meg uh, sorry my wife and my um my sister-in-law 
were both raving about it at the time as well, and they're not really too fussed on that front of things. At not the same level I am, anyway. And um, yeah, it, it definitely had the, the 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 required effect. It's again just Peter Jackson was interested in doing it. No one else has been since, but apparently Cameron's doing it again for Avatar two, three, four, and five. <laughs> so you know. Uh, I see that many, eh? Yeah. Which, by the way, I will jump in with a very small bit of my news very briefly. There, Zoe Zoltana has said, or Zoltana has said that she will do um, every single Avatar sequel. She is all in for all of them. Wow! So she's in for the four sequels. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. I guess even if it doesn't happen, I guess that, like you know, if even it pieces out after two or three, then no, you're no, still they're probably filming make... all four together. What? Yeah, you're going to be having insane. Avatar from the from. Uh, let's see, 2018, 2020, 2022, and 2023, possibly the last one. The last one might be 2024. And, and they're just filming it all in one go? Yep. Fair play. Yep. Sounds great. Yep. <laughs> James <laughs> Cameron is coming, from you and, uh, coming for you, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yes, that was my little jump in there. But yeah, no, I think it's, yeah, it's one of these things where when something becomes cheap enough, everyone suddenly does it. Like video recorders, for example. You know, having your video taken in, what, the 60s and 70s was very unlikely. Became mm. a bit more in the in the 80s, and now we've all got one, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, our, our kids and, and their kids will be the first generation to know that they will have videos of everything, you know? Yeah, it's funny, actually. I now know several people... Uh, this is a bit weird for me. I know several people <laughs> on... Um, who are on YouTube, who have over 11 million views. Whoa. Like, on one views. video. And it's just like, wow. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just like one of them was picked up by an American broadcasting thing. I don't know whether you heard about them. It's like US, um, Good Morning USA or something. Oh, right, yeah. Just a small, um, you know. Small thing. Just a little thing, yeah. Just a little thing. Um, but they got picked up by that and they went, boof, <laughs> everywhere. Every American in the universe watched it. Well, at least twenty over 22 million. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the what the hell? Luckily, we know that it was at least that many because it's well known that Americans will only watch a YouTube video once. Is it? Yes. Really? Yeah, Is that true. a fact? Scientific fact. <laughs> Just, just the once. Yep. Never again. Never again. They're oh. very forward-looking people. I see. Yeah. They refuse to look back. Refuse to look into the past. That's that's interesting. Yeah. Whereas, funnily enough, the Canadians only watch one one YouTube video per lifetime. That's it. <laughs> First one they see. That's it. Done. <laughs> oh, you got to pick carefully, and that's yeah. Stuff. You know, they never know. Sometimes they click on one thing, and that's all they're left watching for the rest of their life. <laughs> you sure that isn't just a YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> You've clicked on that. You're, that's the only one we can provide you with now. Possibly. I mean, when you're in the middle of Saskatchewan or somewhere, you know, it's like... we've buffered it, and yeah. that's it. The only thing that's got Wi-Fi there are the bears. You know, it's like... bears. Yeah, that's uh, how you. That's how you get Wi-Fi into the forest. You see, you put the you put the router on top of the bear. <laughs> Just hope he's in your area. Just hope he's you know meandering or hopefully hibernating near you. You get six months of solid signal, then it's great. <laughs> Well, I think that brings us to a close on my side. <laughs> Bear wandering Wi-Fi. Yeah, you know that you would buy into that if you were if you were somewhere which had bears and somebody said I've strapped Wi-Fi emitters to the bears. Well, at least you know the bears were around. What exactly? Hey, I can look at you. Oh shit! Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> Might be the last YouTube video you ever watch, which is why you only ever watch one YouTube video in in Canada. <laughs> Boom! Uh, I knew there was a reason. A long setup. <laughs> <laughs> Another slow burn. <laughs> ah, the madness. Right, well, in that case, then, we shall move on to the final section of the evening. Okay, so the final section of the evening is, as normal, my section, because, of course, we have to end on a low note. So, I have... Many... <laughs> no one laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> it's all right. When I cut it together, my laugh won't be in there, and you'll laugh straight away. So, you know... <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> shit editor's rights editor's rights I'm editing you all out I'm really funny fuck you <laughs> <laughs> right everything you say a massive laugh <laughs> yeah mine right then so uh, stuff stuff and ting 
Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters came out the, in the last week, and there has been many, many, many things going on around it. Um, sadly, some of it has been unpleasant. Uh, Leslie Jones has quit Twitter because of the amount of racist abuse she has received, um, wow. she, it, which is just ridiculous. Um, which I'm not going to delve into because it's just it's just deeply unpleasant. So to um, counter that. Uh, Ghostbusters is struggling to get a release in China because China's um, China's obviously one of the biggest movie markets in the world, um, and unfortunately their censors are pretty sp- pretty hard on on um, on films uh, to the point that they will edit out most things that have anything to do with the supernatural. Obviously yeah. not looking so good at the moment. So <laughs> in an attempt to somehow I don't know trick the censors, they um, they are not calling them Ghostbusters. They're calling them the Superpower Dare Die Team. <laughs> Seriously? Okay. Yeah. Superpower okay. Dare Die Team. Fair enough. Yeah. Not really it, sure why. Did it, did it work? I, uh, no, I don't know. They haven't, they haven't screened it for them yet. So, um, obviously, they're hoping desperately that they'll get in there, because if they do, then they'll make their money back like no one's business. But, um, yeah, not sure. Uh, but I quite like that, because it sounds like some sort of, um, you know, sort of mad... 1980s Japanese uh, manga thing but you know anyway um, other side of things do you remember when they first said we're going to do a Ghostbusters it's all girls and everyone went no you can't do girls and somebody piped up and said don't worry we're doing one with guys as well oh vaguely yeah well it turns out that apparently that was never real (laughs) so (laughs) um, so they're not yeah Ivan Reitman came out saying nah that was just a lie um, so he he um, he didn't know why that came out, and you know that was the only one that they were ever making was the was the girl Ghostbusters movie, which has come out, and you know I quite enjoyed. But um, I think that's brilliant. Yeah. So basically, they went shut up. We, we'll go and give you testicle busters as well, and everyone went yay, and they were like no, <laughs> which I quite enjoyed. Um, and Sony uh, finally on the on the Ghostbusters front, Sony has confirmed that they will be making a sequel uh, because apparently it has made enough money uh, that they will they will go ahead with it even though it's not you know uh, pulled back its full amount yet they're, they're going to say yep we're going ahead with that so yeah um, being that the you know, have you guys seen the, the new Ghostbusters movie yet? Uh, no but okay. to be fair I don't go to the cinema very much so ah okay no me neither fair enough well I mean yeah it's it's fine I really like the cast uh, the script's pretty good in most places the plot's a bit ropey and the bad guy's a bit short uh, sort of short shrift but other than that, I, th- I certainly think that the team need another another go round, as it were. Um, it would be quite good, good fun to see them again. So, fingers crossed that that, that comes to pass, as Sony have said. Uh, they haven't officially officially said it, but the guy who's sort of in the know at Sony said, "Yeah, that we're doing it." So, yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, so that's Ghostbusters. So from Ghostbusters to other supernatural people who bust things, uh, Buffy season eleven is happening. What? Yes. Buffy, you, yeah, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Did you not know it's been um, been back going, in reality? Yeah, no, no, no. It's still on comics. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> they carried it on in comics. Yeah, they? yeah, basically. Is it uh, Sarah playing it again? Uh, yeah, in the comics. <laughs> Sarah Jessica. Well, is it, it, yeah, Sarah Jessica Parker. She, Sarah, no, Sarah Michelle so they, Gellar. Yes. Are they? Are they? Do you say so? They're making a new. It's not the like the next actual. No, Seriously, sadly so not. Basically, what uh, they did back in uh, back after season seven is everyone went, "No, you're going to keep making Buffy," and they went, "Yeah, we are." And they went, "Woo!" And they went as a comic, and everyone went, "Oh." oh. <laughs> and they basically, <laughs> like I just did, <laughs> yeah. And they basically kept on doing that. So you know, um, yeah, I, I really quite enjoy the idea that Buffy's still going out there. I haven't read any of the comic books, but you know, the 14 year old girl inside me is is very very pleased by this. Um, she she sometimes gets very annoyed with me, so you know. Um, so Buffy will continue uh, in her 11th season, which is quite fun. But I quite like that they do it as seasons and stuff. And um, Joss Whedon's still as involved as he can be whilst being a very busy bee. Um, other than that, what else has happened? Um, oh, did you guys know that there's a new King Kong movie coming out? Uh, vaguely. It's called it? Kong Skull Island. Yeah, that rings a bell. Yeah. It didn't seem very interesting. No, not particularly. Is this part of the whole monster t- universal thing? No, this is a different one. Oh, okay. <laughs> but right. similar idea. It's good to know you're listening. Um, hey, hey, hey. Yes, exactly. So, no, this is um, basically they've released their first uh, sort of uh, promotional picture 
Tom Hiddleston's in it and a few other people, and Brie Larson and a few others. And basically what's happened is they've sent this picture out and it's got this skull in the background which is um, of a giant gorilla. Now, all of the um, Kongs before now have been, you know, big, but they haven't been that big. This Kong is going to be similar to sort of Godzilla-sized almost, and that's exactly who they're intending to team him up against at some point. Uh, the new Godzilla, though, the one that came out the other year and everyone went, oh, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah, you know. I haven't that. finished watching that film yet. That's un, un, unsurprising. It was a bit sort of, I don't know, the Godzilla bits were good, but there were only ten minutes of Godzilla bits, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. how I was, I was beginning to feel. I'm about halfway through. And that's what yeah, I was, I was it, it, you could... <laughs> not that I would normally um, it, encourage this, but you can watch all of the Godzilla scenes cut together on YouTube and it takes <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> and they're great. It's, it would make yeah. a lot, you know, and then the rest of it, you can just, you know, let yeah, whatever. Just so long as you see the, the, the little bit of, um, of... Oh, I can't remember his name. Oh, he's one of my favourite Japanese actors whose name now escapes me completely. But is that the doctor? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he is good. There's a bit where, where the, the Americans are like, oh, man, what do we do? And he's just like, let them fight. You're like, <laughs> no, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> you know, I've seen it on, like, um, I can't remember which streaming one it was on anyway. But um, every time I saw it, I, I, I you know, I, I, I tried to do a Japanese accent uh, to kind of say, look, it's uh, Gojida, Gojida type of thing. Which is a terrible accent, I know. But what made me laugh really, really hard is when I started watching it and the first scene where he goes, it's Gojira. I was like, no way, that's how he says it. I was amazed that that was that accurate. Yeah, well done. Gojira, of course, being translated as Gorilla Whale. Does it? Yep. Oh, that makes much more sense. Yeah. Not giant lizard creature with fire breath. No, 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 that would be too easy. Gorilla Whale. Gorilla Whale. Gojira. Kind of, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, Godzilla will uh, one day face off against King Kong in one of the most unbelievably silly ideas since Pacific Rim. Uh, but never mind. Which are, makes, makes me think of Link's Awakening, Gorilla Whale. Have you, you've probably never played Link's Awakening. Nope. It's, yep. It was a Zelda side Zelda game on the Game Boy. Did he ride um, a Gorilla Whale? No, but there's this thing, the whole thing in the game is you, you're trying to release the wind fish. <laughs> I've played that game. <laughs> have you? Have you got to the end? Um, I believe I know someone who has. It so, isn't you. <laughs> so you, you you get to the end and you release the windfish, and it's basically a whale, but with tiny, tiny seagull wings, and it just flies off, and you're like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. That sounds I almost it was as good just as building as, uh, towards the worst fall. fart joke ever. <laughs> <laughs> the worst fart joke. That reminds me of your um. Your very strange experience on um, the, your most recent video scene. Yes, the pigeon pigeon dating. <laughs> pigeon dating game. What? <laughs> oh my god! You have to watch it to believe it. I'll put it up. I'll put it up on the uh, the Hubris Mosaic Facebook tomorrow. Ah, excellent. I didn't want to put it up today because you put the uh, podcast. On. No, indeed we did. Podcaster. I don't, I don't want to double spam everyone. <laughs> double double, double. <laughs> <Not> spam. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe it did get a little bit spammy. Yeah, <laughs> Spam attack. Right then. Um, other bits of news. Uh, did you guys end up, uh, very quickly, did you guys ever end up watching Making a Murderer on Netflix? I be- have begun to watch it. Mm, okay. It's very good, I think, anyway. Um, but it might be as biased as fuck. I don't really know. But they have confirmed that they're doing uh, more Netflix, more Making a Murderer episodes. Hooray. They haven't said whether they're doing a full season or anything, but, you know. Uh, continuing more of a good thing. It is a very interesting case, so yeah. That's that's almost as good as the forensic files. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Uh, sadly, I do. <laughs> it's got Excellent. awful. Um, it's, what was the uh, um, nuclear bunker people? What was that one called? Oh, doomsday bunkers. Doomsday bunkers, that's it. Oh God, those people God. are psychopaths. They really are. It actually, it's like, um, it, the whole thing is normally like, I want to be prepared for the worst. Yeah. Can you imagine what people are going to do? Well, I can now. <laughs> <laughs> you are literally going to shoot people left and right Pretty all much, over the yeah. place. It'll be a case of, uh, we think that the government's falling right, I'm going to kill everyone. It's The funny thing is, that got like, um, and got like two and a half or three stars on Netflix, which is pretty poor for Netflix. It really most is things poor, get yeah. like yeah. four or five stars yeah. most of the time. And I thought, do you know what? 
Uh, that sounds as if it's going to be a comedy. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it uh, could it could easily actually be a satire, couldn't it? It could be, yeah. But I think it's a mix between a comedy and a psychological effect. <laughs> It's study. Yeah. Um, this is actually just the, the scientific studies from some yeah. kind of weird, like, you know, 30-year experiment. Or <laughs> Poke the nutters with a stick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Oh, God, it's when one of them went, yeah, I just spent myself half a million on this. And you're like, you did what? <laughs> and you're looking at the thing that the guys made him, and you're like, I don't know what I expect an underground bunker to look like, but I don't expect it to look like a steel tub that's been covered by half a foot of earth. No. <laughs> you know, my, my favourite one uh, I, I kind of went on a rant mid, mid-episode where the, <laughs> the, where the owner of the company is going we need to provide this guy he's just had a generator nicked from uh, underground oh yes yeah, yeah yeah and then he goes um, he needs some kind of defence um, some kind of, so what I've done is I've made an automated toy and I was, I was just screaming at the, I was like you're not allowed to yeah. it's illegal yeah. it's not right you can't have like AI automated guns yeah. that shoot people without human intervention it's just <laughs> wrong and, uh, right near the end of the episode he goes well obviously we can't do this at the moment because it's highly illegal it's like <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so he fits, he fits him some speakers instead so <laughs> So that instead of it shooting people when they go to nick his generator because they've figured out where he is... He can they, shout at them. <laughs> he can shout at them, yeah, just go, Oi, leave my fucking generator alone, you I bastards. That would work, though. I do reckon that would probably work until they went, I don't care anymore. Yeah, exactly. Take the cameras as well. <laughs> <laughs> nice speaker, mate. Like, cheers. He put them about two foot off the ground. He did. <laughs> and it's when, the, it's when he turns up and he's like, ah, oh, I don't know how they found how they got the generator. We put it under like two feet of concrete. You look at it and it's basically under um, under uh, concrete slabs that you'd use for a barbecue. And you're yeah. like, what? <laughs> That's not engineering. No, exactly. I was sat there going, man, I should be in America. I could be doing this. You know, <laughs> buy a digger and a welding kit and I'm good to go. Some nutter giving me half a million for something that you think is going to, oh, this is mad. But yeah, <laughs> Insanity. Uh, where were we? I can't remember. <laughs> We've digressed too hard. Oh, uh, making murderer. That was it. Um, other minor thing before I get to the two uh, two more uh, in, individual things. Uh, apparently, um, they are still going uh, hell for leather with the new Batman movie. Rumor yep. has it that the new um, the new solo movie uh, may well be set within the walls of Arkham Asylum, which sounds like they're basically going to try and redo Batman Arkham Asylum. I was going to say, that sounds like they're leaning heavily on the PC franchise slash gaming franchise there. Yep, pretty much. Yep. After that will be Arkham City. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Arkham Knight. Dark Knight, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, no, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it, I hope it will be good, but who knows. But, yeah, that's just sort of future sort of people going, ooh. Um, future people. Future people. Are they going to come back in time and tell us about the future? Um, if they were, they would have listened to this podcast and they would know to come back now. Have any of you guys got oh, people hello. in your what room? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what? Just, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? What? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh well, we'll continue without him, shall we? Well, that's a bit concerning because if he's left, I'm in the same town. Well, exactly. I'm miles away. What's what's going to happen now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, listeners, you're left with just me. Laughing to myself into the abyss. Right then, um, whilst they're gone, then I will um, I will continue because you know I'm nice like that. Uh, so the next bit of news that I have is that very exciting. Oh my god! Oh my god! I just came back from the future. You wow. came back from the future. Excellent. Oh blimey! Did were you taken by an old man in a DeLorean? No, it was just like this guy just showed up. It, like he said, it was the time to come back. Oh, excellent. That, that he, he wanted me to see the future that the, the podcast creates. <laughs> what's joy what's his unity. name, Rufus, by any chance? The joy and unity that the podcast creates. In Yay! The wow, so it's an amazing. Well, he took Matt as well, so I don't know quite when he's coming back. I don't know. Did oh, you see him in your travel? The microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Matt didn't go to the future. He just tripped up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's amazing well I was going to continue without you both but since you've been returned this is excellent news uh, uh, you probably now know what my next bit of news is but never mind we'll go ahead with it anyway go away again if you want <laughs> nope 
Okay. Right, very quickly then. Um, I have Star Wars and Star Trek news. Pick hey. one. Uh, Star Trek. Okay, Star Trek it is. Uh, right then. J.J. Uh, Abrams has said that he doubts that William Shatner will ever appear in any of the new Star Trek movies. Oh, thank God. Uh, which, yeah, it sounds <laughs> silly anyway, but um, he's been pining for that. <laughs> like Chris Pine, who's playing him. See what I did there. Oh, very um, clever. Yeah. Um, who's, he's been pushing for that particular thing to happen ever since Nimoy turned up in one. And he was like, I'm in Star Trek too. And you're like, yes, it, quiet will you know it's like no but yeah anyway so he doesn't think that will ever happen uh in other news on the kelvin universe uh the, the new bits um star trek beyond is not even out yet and star trek 4 on that side of things has been already announced and chris hemsworth will be returning which is dun, 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 dun. exactly which is exciting and okay, interesting uh, my ignorance shows but who is chris hemsworth Chris Hemsworth plays Thor, but he also in the in the Kelvin universe is well known as Jim Kirk's dad. Why is my only... fucking heating on? <laughs> the oh, is, the man, is the man from the future? Yeah. It's not. No, it's not. It's just so hot that my radio is actually just warm from the heat. Carry okay. on. <laughs> um, Chris Hemsworth played George Kirk, uh, which was Jim Kirk's dad, uh, who spoilers for all the 2009 Star Trek. Uh, died in the first ten minutes um, of the of the first movie, but this implies that, of course, there will be some sort of time travelly, uppy downy, jumpy jumpy stuff going on. Or just a flashback. Uh, well, no, apparently he's going to be sharing the screen with Chris Pine, who was oh, obviously right. Jim Kirk. So yeah, sounds uh, as though there shall be timey wimey stuff. Great, which is very Wibbly exciting. Wobbly, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. Uh, so Star Trek Beyond is out on the weekend. It will be very exciting. And um, we shall see what happens there. Star Trek in. Are you going to do a, a, a review? Of course. Cool, I'll read that instead of going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, it's in okay. case... It'll be, on the, um, it'll be on the website as well, won't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, in case, though, you, you wanted to watch Star Trek in, in your house, you may have noticed that uh, all of Star Trek is currently now on Netflix UK, which is very exciting. So yeah. it has the original series, the animated series... Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, and I believe most of the movies from Generations onwards. Um, yeah. So I don't think they've got the original movies on there yet, but I have hope. Uh, the other good ex- side of things on this, though, is that they have confirmed that Netflix will also be getting uh, the new Star Trek series, which will be coming out next year, uh, which originally was only going to be coming out on CBS uh, CBS uh, payment thing. What's it called? Uh, CBS All Access. Oh, I thought you were going to say um, CBS Paywall. Well, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that was what it was going to be. They were going to apparently they were going to release the original episode for free to everyone, and then go first taste free, motherfucker, and then um, make you pay to see the rest of them. Um, so yes, uh, but apparently now they will be getting it to everyone basically. So within a nice. day of it being released on CBS All Access, it will be coming out on Netflix. It seems like net, it seems a bit like CBS might be shooting themselves in the foot unless Netflix are giving them a significant cut. But um seems likely, that, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's got to be really, hasn't it? I think CBS realized that they just weren't going to get people watching it if they didn't get it out on a major network, but who knows. Um, <laughs> That's so, all CBS network thing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, that will be happening. Um that's all my Star Trek news, but I'm very excited by the idea of it being back on TV because that's really where Star Trek belongs. I think um, they've never. I, I, I do have one question. Yes, and it's not Star Trek related; it's Star Wars related. <gasps> well, I'm just coming on to the Star Wars bits. Would you? I know, I know, I know. But this, this is a kind of a preemptive question. Lately. Okay, so long as it's not about Rogue One, because I don't know anything, and I will kill you if you tell me anything. No, that's right. It's about this Rebelly thing, like some kind of cartoon doodah. Oh yes, Star what, Wars. What's Rebels. that, and where can I get it? <laughs> Star Wars Rebels, I believe you can get it on DVD now, um, <sighs> and it's set between the end of um, it's set between the end of the prequel trilogy and the beginning of the original trilogy. So, in the eighteen years where Luke Skywalker is growing up on Tatooine, this is the story of a group of a group of sort of mismatched heroes who uh, may or may not become the beginning of the rebellion that we see in the original trilogy. Uh, they're really good. Um, I've, I've seen the first two series. They are fantastic. 
um, and I would thoroughly recommend them to everyone. And that does segue nicely into my first bit of news, which is in the third season, uh, they have recently set out the trailer for it, so this is nothing that you won't have seen if you've seen the trailer. If not, go and watch it. It's a good trailer. Uh, they are um, bringing back one of my favourite, all-time favourite uh, characters from Star Wars who never turned up on the big screen, and in fact only ever turned up in the, the extended universe that I believe we talked about last week, which is Grand Admiral Thrawn. Uh, <gasps> which is oh, very he's exciting. supposed to be good. He is very good. Is he, he the blue guy? He's the blue guy with the red eyes and the black hair and the white uniform. Um, cool. In the books, I don't know what version he will be in the in the um, in the cartoon because obviously, the books where he was first created by Timothy Zane back in the early nineties uh, have now been uh, erased from Star Wars history, according to um, according to uh, Disney. Anyway, um, oh really? I thought they were just going to saying well, they, maybe. They, yeah, I they're basically they're not like, canon. Maybe they're, if we want it to be real, it is, and if not, then no. They basically said that certain things are canon, certain things aren't, and the ones that aren't canon could be considered to be alternate timelines or something if you oh, wanted okay, them to be. But basically, <laughs> they've said right anything that we make and anything that George Lucas has made is right, and anything else that counteracts that is not. Okay. So yeah, so he's turning up as the big bad guy, and I'm in in uh, season three of Rebels, which is cool because in the in the books he was this uh, sort of grand admiral. The idea was that the the Empire had twelve grand admirals, um, who were uh, basically the ones just below Vader, uh, but they were above Grand Moff Tarkin, the guy who had the control of the original Death Star, and they were the Empire's elite. Basically, these were the people who you you know you sent in when things went really wrong, um, and. Of course, the Empire is well known as being massively racist um, and not liking any any form of alien. And yet somehow Grand Admiral Thrawn, who was a chiss, I believe, if I remember rightly, uh, managed to make his way up to this by, by impressing the Emperor so much with his tactical genius. Uh, in the books, he would study uh, the artwork of, of, um, of whichever species he was fighting against to try and figure out their psychological uh, deficiencies or, or blind spots and use them in his tactics to, um, to try and defeat them which he then did repeatedly uh, so basically in the books anyway the new republic is founded and the empire's been on the run for like five years since the the battle of endor and he turns up and turns it all around and they're like oh fuck you know so um yeah he's big big uh, news and very cerebral he's a, he's not a bad guy who gets involved he think he outthinks you and and you you know fall into his dastardly traps so it'll be quite good fun to see what they make of him on the um, on the tv show which would be cool so mm-hmm. that was very exciting last bit of news on that front you guys know that there's a, a, a young han solo movie coming out yep do now yeah well there we go uh, it's going to be one of the other uh, star wars anthology films um, yeah they cast the dude they have they've cast the dude who is aiden ehrenreich or ehrenrich uh, i think it's reich but i'm not sure uh who is playing the young han solo I can only say good luck to him um, because I don't really think that the whole thing's a good idea. As I've said many times before, demythologizing okay. Han Solo is a bad idea in my head. But yeah. Um, yeah, he does look the part, though, at the very least. He does look fairly young Han Solo-ish. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but um, we'll see uh, whether yeah, it's anything but a, but a... Stop a, clicking, a, man. Sorry, click, sorry. Click, no, I just needed to quickly check who, who this person is. No, click, click, it's click, not click. important. I thought you, the other bit of Star Wars news, actually, that you missed, which isn't about Rogue One, I promise, <gasps> is, um, did you hear this, um, they're doing, you know, David Goya? I do know David Goya. He's the screenwriter, he did Dark Knight and Man of Steel and, mm-hmm. and directs and does comics and all sorts of stuff. Yep. So he's working with um, a, a company called ILMX Lab uh, to do a, a Darth Vader VR project, Ooh. which is, it's not a game. Necessarily, yeah. it's more just like a VR film slash experience, where you and are so, Vader, or where you have to be. No, you're just kind of in it and wandering about a bit. I think, and things happen around you. Are you Vader's secretary? Ma- yes, I'm going to say yes. I think, <laughs> uh, you have an affair with him, <laughs> and then, and then and you he, have to hide it from the Emperor, and then he fires you, and you end up claiming ch- childcare benefits from him. Nice. Although, to be fair, I am now thinking Vader got seriously burned. Let's face it, his child-making days are probably over. Okay, well, I, I don't know. That's what, it says. That's what it says in here. Unless he has robo-penis as well as robo-arms and legs. Maybe he does. Or maybe he, maybe they stored some of his... <laughs> that's not what, between, between him falling to the dark side and <laughs> killing, all, killing all the kids... <laughs> 
<laughs> the emperor was like, uh, just before you go and kill all the kids, could you just nip in there and leave a sample? <laughs> and it's very nice. Thank you very much. You'll find magazines in the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> but there's yeah, there's a trailer and stuff for it, and it's and it's kind of supposed oh, cool. to be. Son of, you know, uh, it says uh, it's, it's really emotional, is what he said. Ooh. It's a very sad and emotional thing. Excellent. Because you're kind of in the scene. Mm. Oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, and I, I mm. don't know if that'll be something you get. I, yeah, I guess. So I guess you'll need a VR headset for that. I guess. Yeah, maybe. absolutely. Well, I'll need to um, need to come down and steal Tim's then. Yeah. <laughs> be interesting how that gets released. Yeah, no, absolutely. That seems like a fairly minor thing, unless they're going to release it at the um, at the theme parks as well. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's right. Which I suppose it could do, but no, I've I've been being very cautious with with all Star Wars news that I read recently because everyone's trying desperately to tell me about Rogue One and desperately trying to give away spoilers for Episode Eight already, and I'm like, for Fair God's enough. sakes! I, I still have managed to. Uh, I'm in lockdown. So I haven't heard anything either. Mm. Yes, no, that's about that's the one about the X Men. I though. will kill you. <laughs> it's about Rogue from X Men, right? Oh yes, okay, fair enough. Yes, it is. Yeah, I heard that she. Um, it's about her and she's a baby. Fair enough. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Madness <laughs> ensues. Madness ensues right? indeed. Is that not right? I I honestly don't know, so I okay. cannot. You could tell me that, and I have to believe you because I know nothing else at the moment. So fair yeah, enough. Okay. Yeah, I've got like a massive load of power over you now because I know loads of stuff about Rogue One. Yeah, but that power only works once because after that you'll have no kneecaps. Well, do you say that? <laughs> You're I like the Queen just... in Parliament. She can veto anything she likes, but it only happens once because then they vote her out of power. <laughs> nice. Which remind, which is why there'll be always... more Star Wars films, though. Well, they will. Probably, but okay. you know, you'll, uh, my point is, you'll only have this power once because if you do it once, well, then you bring will be caps. revenge. Okay, but then I'll still be able to talk. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Ooh, unless I hot glue your lips together. Okay, I'll still be able to type. Unless I hot glue your fingertips together. I'll still be able to use a speak and spell. Not, Not if you've got your lips. So yeah. American, sorry. <laughs> mm, I think. I think. Basically, oh, way, that's I, the bit you're concerned about. <laughs> <laughs> basically, uh, if I hot glue all of you to the rest of you, yeah. then you you can't. Uh, maybe I can like. No, you can't. Uh, far in Morse code. <laughs> not Probably. if I hot glue your anus together. <laughs> How in Morse code? Mm, not if I hot glue your vocal cords together. Uh, I think you're basically strangling at this point. Okay, I think I'm probably dead at this stage, and I really. It, it's, it's quite possible. Too. I think you've. Oh, I think you've please. just. I think you've threatened me, and you recorded it. So, <laughs> so when they find you covered in hot glue, in a cocoon of hot glue, <laughs> where? How did yeah. this happen? Ah, damn it! Oh, yeah. I see. I see your cunning tricks. Oh yeah. Don't so you know, there's there's only one way I could get round this, and that's by not releasing the recording that I have. I'm recording it as well. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yes! Right then, before this goes any further, um, I think it's probably time to bring things to a close. Do either of uh, you have any more uh, for any more? Don't think so. No, Excellent. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, are you? Are you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> How many lights are there? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to edit that in. I can't do it again. <laughs> too hot. I was just hoping for a whimper of some form, but that's fine. <laughs> it is far too hot. It is far too hot. I agree. Right then. <laughs> Oh, lights. Um, right. So, in that case, then, it's um, we shall say goodbye from the Minotaur's head. So, thank you very much for listening. Uh, do that wonderful thing that you do and share it with all of your friends. And if they refuse to listen, hot glue them until they do. Um, so, it's goodbye from myself. It's goodbye from Mr. Matt. There are four lights. <laughs> Getting better at that every time. I love it. Um, and we'll say goodbye to Mr. Sin. I don't know what's happening. I don't like it. <laughs> it's okay. It's your turn next. And um, it's a goodbye from myself. Thanks once again for joining us here at the Minotaur's Head. For more Mosaic content, please visit us at facebook.com slash hubrismosaic.